Everybody has a favorite skill in RuneScape. Slayer is the correct answer. This video will be a comprehensive guide on how you should train the Slayer skill all the way from level 1 to level 99. Or more so, 9 to 99. Because your journey starts off with the Natural History Quiz. Located in the basement of the Varrock Museum, take a brief quiz at each one of the exhibits, and Orlando Smith here will award you with level 9 Slayer. Before we go further into training, we need to talk about the equipment. It's okay if you don't have these things yet, but you should be working towards them. All of these are super important for the Slayer skill. The Dwarf Cannon spins around and attacks enemies around it, greatly speeding up your Slayer tests and your experience per hour. This is really good for areas where you are in a multi-combat zone so it can attack multiple enemies at once, and this provides you with a ton of passive range experience. Mains can just buy this on the Grand Exchange, but for Irons, you're going to want to come here north of Faldor by the Dwarves, and purchase your cannon from Nelodian. The Black Mask provides you with almost a 17% increase in attack and strength. Mains can buy these on the Grand Exchange, but Irons will have to get them by killing Cave Horrors. You can get the same effect for magic and range by imbuing your Black Mask. For 400 points, you can unlock the Slayer Helm. This combines the Black Mask with all of the other Slayer headgear. Using potions is one of the most important things you can do to maximize your performance at the Slayer skill. If you're short on cash, you can just bring a super attack and a super strength to save money, but the super combo Combat potion will save you inventory space overall if you can afford it. Range potions are great. Magic potions, generally not worth it, but there might be some circumstances where you could bring it. They are pretty cheap. The Expeditious Bracelet and the Bracelet of Slaughter are ways to slow down and speed up your Slayer tasks. The Expeditious gives you a 25% chance of your kill on a Slayer monster counting as two kills, making your task go faster, while the Bracelet of Slaughter has a 25% chance of your kill not counting as a kill, which will extend your task. For melee, you're going to want a 4 tick attack weapon. Depending on where you're at in your journey, that could be a rune scimitar, a dragon scimitar, an abyssal whip, or the garazi rapier. And if you're an iron man, you can use this thing instead. For the rest of your setup, you want to maximize your strength bonus so you can get those big boy hits. And later on in your journey, the fang and the scythe both have niche use cases. For the range skill, you're going to want a high DPS weapon that is fast, like a magic shortbow or the blowpipe. Amethyst darts are a great low cost option for your blowpipe, and your cannon will give you passive experience as well. For magic, you're going to want two types of setups. You're going to want a charge staff to use against bosses. This is things like the trident, the toxic trident, or the sanguinesti staff. You also want a weapon that can autocast ancients, like the ancient staff, or one of the wands. The rune pouch is going to be great for saving space in your inventory, and I strongly suggest you get an occult necklace as soon as humanly possible. It will be the best 600k you ever spend. There's tons more gear to get, just work towards it at your own pace, and for the Slayer test specific equipment, We'll talk about that later when I talk about each individual task. After you complete five Slayer tasks, you will be awarded with Slayer points for every task you complete. Different Slayer Masters award different point amounts based on the tier of Slayer Master. You will be awarded bonus points for certain point milestones like 10, 50, and 100 tasks. These points can be used to buy certain unlocks at the Slayer Point Store at any Slayer Master. Here's a general order and what I think you should buy them in. First one you want to get, Malevolent Masquerade. This is going to allow you to get the Slayer Helm, which will be super useful for the entirety of your Slayer grind. I'm a little bit torn between these next two, but I think I'm going to go with Bigger and Badder. Whenever you kill a Slayer monster on task, you will have a chance to spawn one of their superior variants. These give you a ton of XP and some additional loot. The big loot to go for here is the Imbued Heart sitting at around 95 mil. They're pretty rare, so it's good to get this one early on and give yourself the best shot of getting it. Next, you're going to want to get Hot Stuff. This is going to allow you to get Jad Tasks and later Zuck after you get your first Inferno Cape. These are some of the best experience in the game and great for pet hunting. Just since I got this like five times on my last video, you do not need a Fire Cape to get a Jad Task. You only need an Inferno Cape to get a Zuck Task. If you're a higher combat level, I would get Like a Boss next. This allows you to do Boss Slayer Tasks. The Slayer Master will assign you a boss they pick, but you get to pick how many of them, and then you get to use your Slayer Helm to kill them more easily and more quicker. The rest of these are good, but less important. Ring Bling, great. You can make Slayer Rings. Uh, Slayer Rings teleport you around to popular Slayer locations. Broader Fletching, this is more for Iron Men, so you can make Broad Bolts. Uh, the Gargoyle Smasher, Slug Salter, Reptile Freezer, and Shroom Sprayer. Man, that's hard to say. Uh, those are all good quality of life. Basically, all of those monsters have an additional Slayer item that you have to use on them. Without this perk, you have to do it manually, but with this perk, it does it automatically. Mithril Dragons are a great late game task. If you're earlier on, these will take forever and they're probably not worth you killing. 
Uh, but if you do them, you should get duly noted so you can get the noted myth bars. If you're interested in killing Armadil, watch the birdie is great because then you're able to get Aviancy's on task. A lot of the rest of these are mostly for Iron Man. Reptile got ripped. This is a good one to get early on if you're an Iron Man who needs to kill shamans for their Warhammer. Basilocked is another one of those that is pretty much Iron Man only if you're going for your jaw. Vampire Slayer to get your blood shard. Warped Reality would be good pretty much exclusively for super early game Iron Man who haven't gotten the Kraken unlocked yet. So if you're sub 87 Slayer and Iron Man and you want to charge staff, then you can do Warped Reality. And then I would also unlock Wildy Slayer if you're not terrified of the wilderness and you want to get some crazy points per hour from Wildy Slayer. I think that's a great one to unlock as well. Extending is really going to be up to your preference. Do you like the task so much that you want to do considerably more of it? For your block list, this is something that'll be after you purchased all of the essentials, but basically tasks that you want to block are going to be tasks that you will skip every time, but also tasks that are very common. So Water Fiends is one of the worst tasks in the game, but it's also very rare. So this would not be a good task to block. You would just skip it every time you got it. So how should you train the Slayer skill? There's really two ways to go about this. Either you can do what you like most, in which case you go do that, have fun, that's what this game is about, but the other is to prioritize the tasks that give you the most experience, and that's what we're going to be talking about next. If you want to maximize your experience, you're going to want to do barrage tasks, cannon tests, preferably in multi, you're going to want to use your bracelets of slaughter and expeditious bracelets, and you're going to want to skip bad tasks. Here's a short list of the tests which provide you with the most experience per hour. If you do get a bad task that you do not want to do, you can skip this task using 30 Slayer points at any Slayer Master, or you can go to Turiel and get an easy task from him. These are usually pretty quick, but doing this will reset your streak. Let's talk about the people who assign you the tasks first. To unlock a new Slayer Master, you have to gain combat levels, with Duradil being the only master with an actual Slayer level requirement. At lower levels, this choice is made for you. You just do the highest level Slayer Master that you can do. But once you reach combat level 100, there is a choice to make. Do you want to do Duradil? Do you want to use Neve or Steve? Or do you want to use Konar? Overall, I think Duradil wins. It's going to be the most experience. It gives you more burst tasks than the other ones, which are going to be your big experience tasks moving forward. Uh, he gives you more boss tests than the other ones and generally just has a better selection than the other two choices. Neve is still a decent pick overall, depending if you're targeting certain tasks that have better waiting over here. Uh, it's the best way for you to get a Jed or a Zuck test, so if you are targeting those, you're going to want to go to Neve. Tonar's whole thing is that she not only tells you what monster to kill, she also tells you where to kill it. Because of this, she can assign you a location that is not burstable, not cannonable, or just generally inefficient. If you are looking for just experience, I would avoid Konar entirely, but she does have some uses. She does give the most Slayer points out of any of the standard Slayer Masters, so it is recommended if you do need Slayer points to go to her for all of your bonus tasks. So you would do like nine at Dirtle, but then on the 10th, you would come and get one from Konar. The big draw for Konar is that you can get a Brimstone key used to unlock the Brimstone chest. This is pretty good for Iron Man, gives a lot of early game, mid game supplies. Uh, for mains, it's a little bit of extra GP, but overall, I don't think it's worth it. Also, she's the only way you can get Hydras on task. So if you want to do some Hydra, you got to suffer through some Konar. Oh, I see you looking at that like button. Next, I want to talk about the best way to do each and every Slayer task. However, there are so many that this would be like a four hour video. I'm going to focus just on tasks that you can get from Neve, Duradil, and Konar. Aberrant Spectres require you to use a nose peg or the Slayer Helm that already has the nose peg in it. You can cannon them, and I do recommend bringing an herb sack if you have it, since they do drop so many herbs. The best place to kill these is the Gnome Stronghold. You're able to use a cannon to do some extra damage and tag them if you want to AFK. Just throw on Auto Retaliate, Protect from Magic, and let it rip. For your gear, I recommend your highest DPS melee setup or your blowpipe setup. Abyssal Demons are a great burst or barrage task. They also come with a few different AFK methods if you're feeling a little bit lazier, and if you want, you could kill the Abyssal Sire. This is mainly for collection logs, as the GP per hour really isn't that great. The trick is to aggro demons from both of the rooms, and then you want to stack them in the middle of this hallway here. Some great ways to aggro are the Bulwark spec. I recommend to bring a Light Bear if you're going to be doing the Bulwark spec to aggro them all. Uh, steel Darts are another really good option as well. One of my viewers on my last video actually suggested that you use Smoke Barrage instead of Ice Barrage. Personally, I always Ice Barrage them, and it's kind of annoying. They 
they teleport around and then they're frozen so they get stuck out a little bit and they're not in your pile. But if you do use any of the other three spells, you don't run into that problem where you freeze them in the wrong spot. However, Blood Barrage and Shadow Barrage are also significantly more expensive than Smoke Barrage, so that's why I suggest doing that. If you're looking for a more chill method, you can just aggro all of the demons in one room, throw on Protect from Melee, and auto-retaliate them. The Venator Bow is even better for this, since it will automatically aggro other ones with the arrow bounces. Adam and Dragons are not a very fun task, but at least you only get like five of them, so it's extremely fast, and they're good for farming up points. You're gonna need anti-fire protection and anti-poison as well. There's only one place you can kill these, and that's the Lithran Dungeon from Dragon Slayer 2. For these, I recommend you using a melee setup with a lance. If you can't afford a lance or don't have a lance, the fang will work just fine as well. Any dragons do have a special attack where they spit poison at you. All you have to do is move out of the way of it, but sometimes you will get hit by it. This is why I recommend bringing the Antidote++ plus plus, as that's going to mitigate some of the damage. Anku are a great AFK test. You usually get like 50 to 80 of these. They're very fast, and you can use the Salve Amulet to speed up your kills. The best place to kill these is in the Catacombs of Curran. Just chuck on Protect from Melee, come on over here, aggro them all, and then turn on Auto Retaliate. Honestly, you don't really have to keep aggroing them because they are aggressive. Your character will just kill through them, check back every once in a while, and the task will eventually be complete. You can stack them up and barrage them. However, they have so few hit points that I really don't think it's worth it. Most of your time is going to be spent waiting for them to respawn. Avianzis exist purely to do Armadil God Wars dungeon. If you are not going to be sending Kree, I would not unlock these. They're not really good otherwise. Uh, you can use keys from the wilderness to save on KC since killing the Avianzis will whittle away at your task, which means that you can kill less Armadil on task. I'm not going to put a whole Armadil guide in the middle of this guide, so if you are interested in learning how to do Armadil, I suggest watching an Armadil guide. Basilisks require either V's shield or a mirror shield equipped to fight them. I do only recommend unlocking these if you are an Iron Man and you need to get your jaw for the face guard. The jaw's rarity and the slow kill speed make these a very bad moneymaker and a very bad task if you're looking for experience. As a main, I would skip them entirely. If you are going to want to fight them, you will want to protect from magic, get your best crush setup, or if you do have a fang, you can use that as well. I do not recommend ranging them because it's very slow. Black demons are a very common task, and you do get some options with them. You could kill demonic gorillas. This is great for Iron Men or main accounts who are going after some Zenites. You can use your Helm's bonus on Scotizo and use up all of your totems, but if you want to do the normal ones, there are several spots which are cannonable. These can be cannoned in the Taverly dungeon. You just have to make sure that they are not hitting you because this is not a multi-combat zone, otherwise your cannon will only attack one at a time. You can also cannon these in the Chasm of Fire. I just tested out both spots and they're about the same. I think Taverly is a little bit better. For Black Dragons, you could kill baby Black Dragons for a very quick task and Slayer points. The King Black Dragon can be killed for its pet, or you could do Brutal Black Dragons. They're a decent moneymaker. They used to be a lot better. It's still an option, but personally, I like to stick with the Baby Black Dragons. The best place to kill them is here in the Taverly Dungeon. That's the entrance right there, so you just run down the main hallway, go up this little bit of rubble, and you will find two of them here. They are aggressive, so you can just throw on Auto Retaliate. Range, Mage, Melee, doesn't matter. Just turn that on, walk away, let it rip, and when you get back, your task will be completed. Bloodfelds are one of the best tasks in the game if you're looking for experience. I do recommend completing Sins of the Father so you can cannon them in the lab. The experience here is absolutely mental. You are just going to want to throw on Protect from Melee with your cannon, and then just let the Venator bow rip. I forgot my arrows, but uh, don't forget your arrows. If you don't have Sins of the Father done, you can do these here in the Catacombs of Curran. Either spot is fine. Same concept as before. You can either Venator bow these with the uh, arrow bounces. It will start aggroing other ones for you, and this is extremely AFK. If you are looking for some more melee experience, you can just tag them all and you'll get a little bit of AFK time while your character auto retaliates. For blue dragons, you can kill Vorkath, but the salve gives a better bonus than the helm anyway, so it's not really worth it. Uh, brutals are not very good at all. If you are going to do your blue dragon task, I recommend doing the baby blues. I do recommend killing these in Taverly Dungeon. Bring a stamina pot because you're going to have to run around a little bit to kill them. Uh, after a certain level, they are not aggressive anymore, and they're a little bit far apart. Ah, boss tasks. One of my favorites. These tasks, they assign you a random boss in the game. You pick how many of them that you want to kill. Uh, since there are so many different options, I can't really tell you 
how to do it, you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. Brine Rats are a bit of a lower level task. You can cannon them and they do drop the Brine Saber, which is almost 300k right now. To get to them, you're gonna wanna teleport to Fairy Ring DKS, come up over here by the tree, then you're gonna dig with your spade. Then just pop down your cannon and melee arrange them as you see fit. Cave Horrors are cannonable. You do need to equip a Witchwood icon and they drop the coveted Black Mask. This is another one of those tests that I would designate as Iron Man only, as a main, it's not really worth going for the Black Mask. They are so rare that your GP per hour is going to be really low, and they're not good experience either. I did forget to mention it, you are going to need a light source. Right here is the best place in the north of the cave to set up your cannon. I don't know what else to say about these things. For Kraken tests, I recommend killing the boss over the baby guys. Uh, it does give you a good chance of getting the trident, the tentacle, the pet, and the jar. For both mains and iron men, I do recommend using the private cave. The reason that you're going to want to do this is, one, so you don't get crashed up top, but the more important reason is that your drops stay on the ground. The Kraken does drop a lot of food, so you will be able to make your trip considerably longer by using the private instance. To disturb the whirlpool, I do recommend using the fishing explosive. You do not have to tag all of the tentacles anymore, which is great. I also recommend you bring in Blood Barrage in the pouch to heal up if you do run out of food. You do not need prayer potions, super restores, or anything like that. I would just bring hard food. With the Dagonauts, you got options. You can either do the normal ones or the Dagonoth Kings. If you do want to kill the normal ones, I recommend the Lighthouse. There's just so many of them that your cannon just goes in. You're going to go through a ton of cannonballs, but this is going to be a ton of experience and it's going to be over with very quickly. If you are concerned with cannonball usage, you can come to the Catacombs current and just AFK them. Auto retaliate, protect from melee, and you should be good here. None of them attack with range, so nothing to worry about on that end. They are extremely safe to AFK. Personally, I really like the Dagonoth Kings. It's probably just nostalgia because the money's not that good, but there are three pets to get, so I'd recommend giving them a try. This might sound weird, but I do really like Dark Beasts. They're super AFK, you can cannon them, and they're just a really fast task. One of the best things about them is that the Slayer Ring teleports you directly to them. All you gotta do is set up your cannon, put on Protect from Melee and Auto Retaliate, and just let your character do the rest. Oh, Drakes, nobody likes these. I don't even want to gear up to pretend to do a kill for you. Dragonbane weapons work against him, so I recommend using the Dragon Hunter Lance. I recommend using a cannon for these to speed them up, protect from range, and every seven auto attacks, they're going to do this special attack that you have to move out of the way of. That right there, move out of the way, and it does nothing. Overall, they're really slow and they don't really drop much. I recommend skipping these every time you get them. Dust Devils are the opposite. They're a great task. You can barrage them. They're excellent experience, and uh, they drop the iconic dragon chain body. The best way to kill these is barraging them in the catacombs of current, but first we have to get them all attacking us, which means we need to tag them. The Bulwark is a great choice for this, but sometimes you don't get all of them. Steel darts are also really good for this. They're super inexpensive and they are two ticks. Once you have them all, you do have to get them all in a clump. The best way to do this is by running through one of them. So if I run through this devil, dust devil right here, that means that other dust devils can fall in on him. So I could either do a corner type of thing like this and run through him this way, or I can hold down shift and just click back and forth and eventually they will all fall into one spot where I can barrage them in one club. Ah, man, elves. I'm starting to realize that I don't like a lot of these tasks. Anyways, you can cannon them. They're bad GP. They're bad experience. Skip these if you can. Ledia, I think I'm saying that right, is a good place to kill them. You can use your cannon here and then just kill the elf warriors or the elf archers. The other place to kill them is the Iworth camp. You can cannon them here, but as you can see, the buildings will block a little bit of it. Um, overall, as I said before, not the best task in the world. Fire Giants, super classic. Who remembers grinding out for like a rune scimitar here back in the day? Anyways, they're pretty mid. They're not bad. They're not great. There's some AFK methods and you can use a cannon. So normally I skip Fire Giants, but I wanted to find you guys the best possible method. And what you're going to want to do is come to the Giant's Den. So you're going to teleport with your fairy ring to DJR and run south here. So at the very back of the Giant's Den, you can fight Fire Giants. It's not multi-combat, but you can still use your cannon in here. The really cool thing about this spot, though, is that while it is not technically the Catacombs of Curran, you can still get the totem pieces from here, so it adds a little bit of a bonus to your task. I made the mistake of skipping these all the time early on in my Iron Man, but they're actually sick as hell. 
They're like way weaker than the normal wyverns. You still do need the mind shield and everything, but they're just way more AFKable. To get to them, come to the mushroom meadow on Fossil Island. It's just south of the magic mush tree right here and go down the trap door. I recommend a melee setup. The lance is great against them. I think it's actually best against them. I would just throw on protect from melee, auto retaliate, and then just go to work. If you're a higher level, you probably don't even need the protection from melee. Just uh, if your defense and your gear is a little bit lower, it might be a good idea. And you won't go through too many food. As you can see, it's just not hitting anything on me. Gargoyle is one of the best early game money makers. You do need a rock hammer to squish them after you lower their HP. I recommend getting Gargoyle Smasher from the shop to do this automatically. And you could also kill the boss variant if you want. I do recommend giving the boss a try. It's a fun fight. There are some good combat achievements for it, but you do make less money than you do at the normal ones. For the normal gargoyles, you're gonna want a melee setup. The Fang is super strong here. Uh, the Scythe is also really good here if you wanna use it, both charged and uncharged. And um, this is another one where you can just auto retaliate. They don't hit you very often, so you don't need to pray against them. Like all these people right here, they're just AFK with auto retaliate on and they're doing fine. I don't think I mentioned it, but the best place to kill these is in the basement of the Mortania Slayer Tower. The best part about a Greater Demon's Task is that you can use your Slayer Helm at Zami God Wars Dungeon. If you don't feel like doing Zami, you can do some AFK methods in the Catacombs or you can cannon them in the Chasm of Fire. For the best experience, we are going to want to do them in the Chasm of Fire with our cannon, which means we need to go to the DJR Fairy Ring. Run slow slightly northwest here and then just go down this rope. For this method, you do want to stay out of aggro range. It is singles down here, so if one of them is attacking you, your cannon won't be able to shoot all of them. So if you are using a range setup and you can get them stuck on these pillars here, you'll be able to attack multiple of them with your cannon all at the same time. That being said, my personal opinion, you should do the whole task at Zami. For Hellhounds, you do have the option of killing Cerberus, which is decent money. Uh, there are some AFK methods, or you could also cannon them in Taverly. For canning them in Taverly, they are in single, so you're going to have to find a place where the cannon can hit them and they can't hit you. Kind of the same concept as the greater demons from before. Overall, personally, I prefer to do the AFK in the Catacombs of Curran. Just throw on Protect from Melee and just let your character do the rest. Overall, the experience is okay, nothing to write home about, but it's not too bad either. Oh god, these are some of the worst tasks in the game. Iron and Steel Dragons. Uh, for Iron Dragons, you're gonna skip these every time. It just takes forever and they drop nearly nothing. For Steel Dragons from Duradel, sometimes he'll only give you like 10 of them, so it's just really fast to get it over with, and those tests are worth doing. Uh, but if you are using Neve, she does assign you like 60, so hard skip for me, bro. If you are gonna fight them and can afford a Tumakin Shadow, that is the move. It rips right through them, but if you cannot, a Dragon Hunter Lance is just fine. I recommend some prayer gear for that. And uh, you are going to want some dragon fire protection. Extended super anti-fire is the way to go. And then uh, protect from melee, piety, and just tear right through them. With the uh, protect from melee and the dragon fire protection from your potion, you will take zero damage. I do like to bring a few food in case I get lazy or just forget to check about my dragon fire protection. Uh, but other than that, you should take no damage. If you can't afford a lance either, if you have a toxic trident or a decent mage setup, that could be an alternative or you could use another stab weapon. Kelphite is a great task because it gives you options. You could do the Kelphite Queen, then there's also options if you want XP or if you want to get your task over with fast and get your Slayer points. I recommend coming to the Task Only Slayer Cave right next to Shanty's Pass here. If you want to get this over with fast, I recommend killing the little level 28 guys here. They just go down super quick, put on that Expeditious Brace and this will be over in no time. But if you do want to maximize your experience per hour, go kill the medium-sized Kelphites. Press can only be damaged by Leap Bladed Weapon it's a pretty AFK task. My only qualm with these is that they are spread too far apart. The Leap Bladed Battle Axe is going to be your best option, and these are located at the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon. These do make about 700k an hour, so it's a pretty decent task for money. Another one of those where you're just going to slap on auto retaliate. As I was saying, look how far apart they are. Is that a bit much? I feel like they should double the amount of them in here and uh, that would make them a little bit better of an AFK task. Lizard men, you have to unlock these, and I don't recommend unlocking them unless you are an Iron Man that is going for your Dragon Warhammer. I guess if you do accidentally get a task and you already got your Warhammer, you could cannon the smalls and that could go rather quickly. You're gonna wanna kill these in the Lizard Man Canyon. 
uh, you are definitely going to want to wear your Shazian Armor 5, otherwise you are going to get hit massive damage off these little blob attacks they keep doing here, and you will like to pray range. I recommend using the blowpipe for maximum DPS. Bro, minions of Scarabus, you got this bug man who's riding a bug. Despite being an awesome NPC, I would skip these. I've literally never done them before. Dang, on the flip side, this is multi and my cannon is going in. I'm taking a quite a bit of damage, uh, but this seems to be a pretty decent task, actually. Little transparency, uh, that was the first time I ever killed them and they absolutely bodied me. There might be a better way to do them. If you do know one, drop it down in the comments below. Um, and if you are trying to do them on task, you should probably listen to that comment. Mithril Dragons, I actually really, really like this task. You usually only get like four to ten of them on task, so it's really, really fast. They do tribrid you, so you kind of have to think about your setup a little bit. And they do drop the dragon full helm, which is like almost 100 mil now. First things first, they do have long range dragon fire, so extended super anti fire or an anti fire shield, absolute must. Then, as far as the best way to kill them, if you do have a shadow, shadow is going to be your best. Uh, what you are going to want to do is stand a little bit out of range and use a protect from range spell. They are still going to mage you, so you still are going to take damage. You need to bring food, so I wouldn't recommend an inventory like this. I only have this inventory so I can show you the melee setup. If you do have a melee setup, I do recommend praying mage while meleeing them, since you are going to be a little bit weaker against mage, and your armor will allow you to tank the melee and range hits. Mutated Zygomites, not a very common task, but a really weird one. They use a magic-based melee attack, you have to use fungicide on them. Once again, there's like an auto use for that one as well. They're not really great in any capacity, but it is a fast task. So as I said, you're gonna need a fungicide. You can get this from any Slayer Master. You also need the fungicide spray, which does come with one canister or 10 uses in it, but usually they give you like 11 or 12 of these. So it's just a little bit more than one canister worth. I like to fight these next to the Cosmic Altar. This is in Zanaris. You are going to want to have some magic defense gear like Dragonhide or Masori. And then for these, you can also protect either melee or range. They use both styles. They're both magic base and they both hit fairly accurately. But as you can see, they have like no hit points and it's over with very quickly. Neck reels are one of the best tasks in the game for experience. You're gonna want to be barraging these in the catacombs of current and they do give you enough rune drops to almost make up for your rune cost. Here we are, catacombs of current. Because this is such a small room, the bulwark is gonna be really good to get all of these on us. You're gonna wanna use the special attack and you can also use steel darts to aggro the stragglers. Then we are going to want to stack them by running through them like I showed you guys with the dust devils and then we can just barrage them. Beware though that the death spawns are going to do some chip damage to you over time, which is why you should also bring blood barrage. One blood barrage should heal you almost all the way to full. These have so much HP for you to do damage to and thus heal off of. Red dragons are a middle tier dragon. You do have to pay slayer points to unlock them. And my advice to you would be to not unlock them. They're really not worth doing as a task, even if you can cannon them. The best spot to kill these is in the Brimhaven dungeon. You have a mix of the mamas and the babies in here, but you can also use a cannon. Uh, same type of situation as some of the other spots where you need to be out of their range. Uh, so only one can hit you at a time. I'm actually not very familiar with this one. So if you know a better spot to drop down your cannon and better spot to hide from these, uh, let me know down in the comment section below. Rune dragons. It's a short task. You can make a solid amount of GP per kill here, and you do need insulated boots. I do recommend bringing an extended super antifire so you can use your defender. And what you're gonna wanna do is just come on in, protect from melee. I do recommend piety. Your tasks are pretty short and uh, it's gonna help you tear through them. They are gonna do this lightning special attack that your insulated boots are gonna help mitigate the damage. You can move out of the way, but I like to chill a little bit harder than that and just kind of a pseudo AFK them. Skeletal Wyverns, the worst cousin of the Fossil Island Wyverns. They're just really tanky and slow and rather unfun to kill, but they do make you a decent amount of money. Uh, the wiki says they're around 700k an hour. To get here, you're going to want to go to the AIQ Fairy Ring and go down this trap door up here. You're also going to need a Mind Shield or a Dragonfire Shield or an Elemental Shield. Uh, as you can see, this place is dead. It used to be packed. It used to be hard to find a wyvern to kill. But personally, I like to use melee. It's a lot faster than range. But if you do want to safe spot them with range, that's a super viable option. If you are on task, you can come up here in a really good spot to use range. 
is uh, right here. This is a safe spot like these tiles and you can just get these guys back behind here and then range them. Smoke Devils are very unique task in that you can both cannon and barrage them. This makes them one of the best experience tasks in the game. If you are a collection log hunter, you can also kill the boss option and it does have a pet as well. For the little guys, you're going to want to set up your cannon right on this spot. Runelight shows you where to set it up, so that's always good. Kind of hard to explain this since I do not have a task. But what you're going to want to do is use your cannon to aggro all of the smoke devils and then use this pillar to clump them into spots. Once you go around another side, they will all congregate to the opposite side of the pillar and vice versa, trying to get after you and just switch sides a few times. You'll be able to get them to clump. It's a fun little puzzle. You will be able to clump like 16, so you'll be able to do more than your max nine. As they die, you'll be able to attack new ones and keep on barraging, which makes this task amazing experience. Spiritual creatures, bro, this task sucks. There's really no good way to go about it. They can drop you dragon boots. Um, this one's a hard skip for me, to be honest. If you absolutely must do them. Let's head on up to God Wars Dungeon. You're going to need God Protection. I'm going to hang out over in the Sardaman area, so I need Sardaman and Zamorak Protection, since those are the two monsters that hang out over there. And then I just recommend Blowpipe and the Mages. The only remotely halfway decent utility I could see this task having is if you were going to do an ungodly amount of necks and just do your whole task at Spiritual Mages to get like thousands of kill count and then just spend like a month at next, which both have sound like a terrible time, but you do you. Suckles on the surface seem like a garbage task, but they're actually really good experience. They're in multi and your cannon just rips them apart and they have a good amount of hit points. All you're gonna wanna do is wear your best melee gear, pop down your cannon right where Runelight tells you to pop down your cannon, put on auto retaliate, Pray magic and just refill your cannon as needed. The cannon will do the rest of the work. It will aggro them all onto you. There's no drops to pick up and you can just chill. Trolls on the outside kind of look like a bad task as well, but they're another one where you can just cannon them in multi for a ton of experience. The only downside is that they do a lot of damage to you, so you might have to restock for food once. First off, we're going to be taking the boat to Jatiza. Once again, rune light to save the day here with the cannon spot. You can do auto retaliate, but Personally, I like to turn auto retaliate off and attack them. You are going to want to change your prayer over time to what is attacking you. I think range is going to be the most effective because usually I have more rangers on me. But if you just got melees on you, feel free to just switch it over to melee. Oh, a granite shield. Taroths are another one of those creatures that can only be harmed with leaf bladed equipment. They do drop a lot of seeds and herbs, so they can be decent tasks for early game Ironmen. These are located in the very back of the Fremenic Slayer dungeon, right next to the Kurosks. But honestly, there's not a whole lot to them, just Hit them with your axe. You have to purchase hot stuff from a Slayer Master using Slayer Points to unlock the ability to get Jad tasks. On these tasks, you have the three options of fighting Jad, Zuck if you already have your Inferno Cape, or just regular Tazars. These are hands down my favorite tasks in the game. They're great experience. They're super fun. There's two really cool pets that you can go for. However, they are both very deep pieces of content and you should look up guides for each of them on their own. Vampires are another great AFK task. They're like the most AFK task. Just make sure that nobody takes your blood shard if you do get one. Before heading over to Darkmire, make sure that you do have a set of Vire that you can throw on. As far as gear, we are going to want the Blisterwood Flail and then some prayer boosting gear as well. Then once you're ready to begin, just throw on auto retaliate, take off your Vire gear, and then they will become aggressive to you. Warped creatures have great character models. Uh, you do need crystal charms in order to kill them, and these are mostly for early game Iron Men. You can use range or melee for these. What's important is that you do bring your cannon and your crystal chime. Luckily, these are in multi, so your cannon is going to be able to hit everything. This is another one of those tasks where if you want, you can just auto retaliate them, or if you want a little bit more experience, you can manually click on them and kill them that way. Key takeaways here, just find a spot where your cannon can hit a lot of them and do as much damage per second as humanly possible. Worms are a great task for early to mid game Iron Men, you do need to equip the Boots of Stone or an equivalent boot. They are draconic, so you can use draconic weapons on them, and they do have some neat dragon drops like the harpoon. You can kill them with melee or range. If you are ranging them, you can just throw on protect from magic and they will do no damage to you. If you are using melee, I do recommend using magic defense armor like Dragonhide. 
Overall, your setup really doesn't matter all too much. They don't do that much damage and you can bank right upstairs. Thank God Water Fiends have a low weight because this is easily the worst task in the game. Since these do have the lowest possible weight from Durdle, you're just gonna skip these every time you get them. They're not worth blocking. If for some super weird reason you have to kill them, you're gonna wanna gear up in your best crush setup and pray range against them. Expeditious bracelets are required for these. Hydra is the best conventional Slayer task for money in the game currently, sitting at 4.2 mil per hour. If you're after a Hydra task, you will have to get it from Konar as she is the only Slayer Master who assigns Hydras. I do recommend killing the Alchemical Hydra, the boss variant of this. As I mentioned before, it's a ton of money per hour. There's a lot of combat achievements and it has a pretty cool pet associated with it as well. The fight is a little bit more involved than I'm doing in this video though, so I would look up a dedicated guide if you are looking to learn how to do the Hydra. Jellies are a weird one that the only high level Slayer Master who assigns these is Konar. You cannot get from these from Neve or Duradel. They are a great barrage task. They just absolutely pump out hard clues, especially if you kill them in the wilderness. As with the other barrage tests, you need to get all of them on you. Uh, we're in the catacombs of current, if you couldn't tell. Since they are so spread apart, I do recommend darts for this one. You're gonna wanna protect from melee. And then just like all of the other barrage tests, we are going to want to stack them up. These can be a little bit frustrating since they are so spread apart. Sometimes they will de-aggro if you go out of that specific jelly's range, but I'm sure you can find a spot like the spot that I'm currently in here where you can get them all to cooperate. Imagine actually not being subscribed.